You could be a boss and not necessarily be a leader. A leader is only a leader when people willingly want to follow that person. So you can be a boss, you might be appointed to that position, but you don't have the leadership qualities that it takes. Capone had it for sure. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is very good, very blessed on this end. And as always, I give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that. Now, why am I? I seem very happy today. I am. I'm always pretty happy. But today more so because I finished my last real traveling speaking engagement of the year. I have one more in just outside of Providence, Rhode Island in Woonsocket. Uh, and that's coming up on December 30th. And uh, we're getting a great response on that because we're going to let the old year go out. You know, we're going to have a drink on that, bring the new year in. It becomes the next day. We're going to have a good time. Tickets are on sale. One socket. I think we're going to have a link up there. You can go and, and still get some. We're going to have a great night. But that's my last uh, traveling for speaking this year. It's been a hectic, rigorous year. No complaints. Thank all of you for supporting me uh, the way you do. We've been all around the world this year. It's been wonderful and especially all around this country. And, you know, people are just great, man. And I really appreciate, you know, the way I'm received. So I want to thank all of you. Thank all of you who support me on YouTube and all the social media platforms. Thank you very much. So what are we going to be doing today? Aha, the new Netflix series, How to Become a Mob Boss. Let me tell you a quick story. I saw a little ad for this and some people started to talk to me about it, I think last week. And I looked at it and I turned the trailer on. And I said, hey, that's my voice. And I didn't remember anything about this, right? So I call up my agent, Lisa, and I said, Lisa, what is Netflix doing? They have my likeness, my voice on this new show that's coming out. She said, I said, how could they do this? And she said to me, uh, Michael, excuse me, but don't you remember you interviewed for them last May, in May of 2022. Do you know that I totally forgot I had even done this interview for this show? But it doesn't stop there. Maybe an hour later, I get a call from Sammy Gravano's crew. Same thing. Hey, Michael, you know, they're using our name and so on and so forth. I said, you better go check it out because I did the interview. He came back and he said, I did it too. Would you believe this? I said, Sammy, we're having, you know, longer than senior moments. I mean, neither one of us remember doing this interview. Anyway, the show premiered uh, Tuesday, November 14th. It's uh, six episodes, How to Become a Mob Boss. And I have to tell you something. I haven't watched it all, but I did watch episode one. I'm going to talk about it today. But I will tell you this. It's different. The concept is great, How to Become a Mob Boss, because the way they do it, okay, it's not only how to become a boss on the street, but they kind of juxtapose that with a legitimate guy becoming a boss, getting ahead. And they did that in archival footage, and they used something so unique that I love, and they used animation to show this. And the animation was really cool in episode one. And for all you young people out there, I know how you like animation, but I want to tell you this. I don't want to say I pioneered this, but I did a documentary back in 2016 called God the Father. Some of you have seen it. As a matter of fact, I think it's for sale online someplace. We're going to put up a link at some point. But we used animation to tell the story. And it was basically my, my life story. You know, my wife, my children were in it. We told the story. We filmed it was great. We filmed in, in Israel. We filmed in Bulgaria. We filmed here in the United States. Very unique documentary, but we used a lot of animation and people just loved it. And I love it here in how to become a mob boss. So what I'm going to do, there's six episodes. I'm not going to, you know, talk about it because I want you to go on Netflix and watch it. I'm going to give you my perspective, my thoughts on it. But I will encourage everybody to watch it because so far, episode one lives up to the billing. I think it's one of the better ones that's been shown so far, not only because I'm in it. I mean, in episode one, I mean, you know, 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. You know, they get sound bites out of you on this. So it's not that big a deal. I don't know how much they use me and Sammy in, uh, in episodes that go forward. But like I said, it's not for that. It's just that this is a good series. I think it's better than Get Gotti. That's my opinion so far. 
We'll see how it goes. So they have six episodes. And you know, the amazing thing too, I have a, an online series um, called How to Be a Boss. And I did it, and I think we have 13 chapters in it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people that were in my inner circle have benefited by this. And I always tell you this, people, I've said it all the time. When you're in business or you do things on the street, there's pretty much the same principles at times that you have to use, the same principles that you apply in a legitimate world. Business is business. That's it. And, you know, you can't be successful on the street if you don't do certain things, you know, that help your business grow. If you don't do certain things, things personally that help you rise in the ranks. So this show kind of illustrates that. And they have six episodes. The first one is uh, Land Your Dream Job. That's the one we'll talk about. And who's, uh, who do they feature in this? Al Capone. And uh, my God, you, you know, you can't get enough of Al Capone, can't get enough of John Gotti, it seems. Uh, but again, the animation, very cool in telling the story of how Al Capone rose through the ranks. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now, episode two is build a better organization. Okay, as far as being a boss, maintaining your leadership position, build a better organization. And they feature Frank Lucas in that one. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not going to comment on it, but that's where that's going. Number three, dominate through terror. Well, you know, to be a mob boss, yeah, you know, and to be in the real world, I guess people have to fear you a little bit too, although the consequences may be of stepping out of line and not as severe as when you're on the street. But they feature Salvatore Totorina, who, you know, a Sicilian guy and a very powerful guy during his time. Number four, Don't Go Rogue, and who else but John Gotti is featured in that episode. And I, I'm kind of sure Sammy will be talking about that, possibly me also, they'll feature me in that. Number five, Play the Long Game with Whitey Bulger. I don't know about that, you know, I got to see the episode, but Whitey was on the run for 16 years. He was, he had a pretty good run while he was, uh, you know, kind of the boss of the Irish crew back then. But we'll see how it plays out. And then number six, Break the Mold with Pablo Escobar. He's the featured mob boss during that. That should be very interesting. Obviously, Pablo Escobar, he had a crazy run, tremendously successful on the street. So those are the episodes. And again, it's all about uh, becoming a mob boss and then maintaining your position as a boss. So let me get into episode one. A couple of people that they feature, they have the usual people telling the stories. Not too many law enforcement people on this one, but they have authors, people that wrote about Capone, people who wrote about the various mob bosses that they feature here. And then as far as the street people, they had Renee Graziano, you know who she is. Her dad was a, a powerful guy in the family. They have myself, you know me, of course. They have Sammy Gravano, and uh, who else did they have? I think they had John A. Light in here also. I'm pretty sure I saw him once. So those are the kind of cast the characters that are telling the story. And then again, animation, they have some great archival footage going way back to Capone's days. Very interesting episode one. So principle of being a boss, I told you, I actually wrote, I mean, I actually created an online series that did very well, helpful to a lot of people. I think we still have it available. Any of you might be interested. Let me know. We'll see if we can post it again. And some of the, uh, you know, I got some notes in front of me, some of the um, principles that they talk about in the series are number one, to be become a mob boss, you have to be driven. Obviously, to become a boss in anything, you have to be driven. You don't just sit there and wait for it to happen unless there's nepotism involved. And uh, even that doesn't work because a good father that has children that wants to prepare them to take over a position, he has to make them start from the bottom. I think Trump did that mentioned Trump's name, and a lot of people that I know who had children uh, and wanted them to take over a company, they made them start from the bottom and learn everything from the bottom up. But those people, in order to do that, have to be driven. They have to say, okay, I want to take over this company. I want to be in a, in a uh, position of authority. I want to help out my father or my family. I want to replace the boss at some point. You got to have that drive in you, no question about it. And I'll tell you what, you know, about myself, people, I was very driven in everything that I did. I was driven. I was driven to, you know, become the best possible mob boss I could be. When I was an athlete, I tried hard to play hard to the best of my ability. Wasn't the greatest talent out there, but I did the best that I could. And uh, obviously, you know, after I got out of that life, I had some success in there, as you know. After I got out of that life, I was driven to, um, number one, defeat the government in the case that I had when they told me they were going to lock me up for the rest of my life. You know, fortunately, we were able to beat that, then come back on the street 
and you know be driven again to recreate or transform myself and be able to support my family and so you have to have that drive in you it's not going to happen for you nobody's going to do it for you that's a quality that you have to have in order to be a boss next you got to have a mentor i can't even begin to tell you how important that is in episode one they have al capone's uh, uh, mentors as being uh, johnny torrio i think you know his story again i don't want to get into it i want to spoil the episode for you and frankie yale two you know important mob guys significant guys that al capone learned from and by the way and not too many people at that time were more driven than al capone i mean he rose to the top obviously so he had that quality that characteristic in him but you know mentorship people are so important man i can't stress how important it is for you to to have somebody to look up to, okay, that can give you quality information and help you along the way. With me, it was my dad, you know, as far as that life was concerned. My dad was a good student of the life. He gave me some very valuable information, taught me how to navigate that life as best I could. And the thing is, I listened. If you have a good mentor, you have to listen. And one of the things my father always taught me is, Mike, be a good listener. Remember that. Be a good listener. Some of the things that he told me, never be the first one to pass judgment on somebody. Because in this life, it's like a wheel. It turns around. The guy that you might be passing judgment on today may be making a judgment on you tomorrow. So be very, very careful before you pass judgment on someone. He used to look at me back in the day and he'd say, Michael, see this telephone? It's a cop. Don't ever talk on the phone. It's a cop. I never really got caught on any um, surveillance tapes that did me any damage. I got caught on some tapes, but they couldn't use them to prosecute me because I always remembered what my dad said and I listened. Very important. When I went to prison, he said, Michael, remember these three words. Please, thank you, excuse me. He said, so many guys that never got any respect on the street, they want all the respect in prison. So you knock into them, you don't say, excuse me, it's like a big insult. You gotta have a problem. Those three words, I never had a problem in prison. I carried myself the way I was taught from my mentor, and it worked out for me. So if you have a mentor, listen. If he's a good one and you respect him and he's giving you good advice, so important. And that's that's what you're going to see, again, depicted or shown in this first episode. And it's valuable information. That's why I like this one better than some of the other Netflix deal that were done. Another good Netflix uh, documentary was Fear City. Yes, I was in that one too, but they did a great job. And when I say I'm in that one, we're not the stars by any means. You know, we contribute in some way. They ask us questions, we respond, and that's it. They're mostly sound bites. That's how they do it. And then they tell the story. So that's how documentaries are done. But Fear City in this one, good one. Next one, uh, leadership material. Obviously, you got to have leadership material. And I got to tell you, one of, the, one of the greatest illustrations of that in Capone's days was what? The way he mastered prohibition. I always said this, people. I've said it a thousand times. It was the government that made Cosa Nostra Mafia strong in this country. Because prior to prohibition, they were just a bunch of guys, you know, extorting people, doing some things, not even big in the drug business, you know, shaking the people down, you know, trying to get stuff going like that. They weren't a big organization. They didn't have a lot of money, okay, but prohibition changed the game, changed the landscape, and Al Capone knew that, hey, people are going to want this product, and we're going to be able to provide it, and that's going to be a home run, a bonanza for us, and that's exactly what he did. So he had the foresight. He saw it, and he probably did it better than anyone else. You know, a statistic that uh, I heard that I didn't even know myself, that back in New York during Prohibition, there were 36,000 speakeasies. 36,000. It just goes to show you when people want something, they're going to get it. You know, they're going to get it on a black market. There's no question about it. So Capone, you know, had the foresight. He had that leadership instinct. And what did he do? He went on, not only did he create, you know, this empire for himself, but he managed it properly. And remember, he had a lot of stuff that he had to uh, fight. Government was on him. There were warring gangs around him. He had a lot of stuff. So with respect to being in that life, he mastered the art of leadership. He really was. And I always said this, you know, you could be a boss, not necessarily be a leader. You could be a boss, not necessarily be a leader. A leader is only a leader when people willingly want to follow that person. So you can be a boss. You might be appointed to that position, but you don't have the leadership qualities that it takes. Capone had it for sure. 
Loyalty. You know, listen, you got to show the people below you that you're loyal and you got to show the people above you that you're loyal. You know, that is really a characteristic of being a boss because when people think you don't care about them, uh, you're not going to have a lot of loyalty towards you either. And you know, if people are not loyal to you, you're not going to last that long. And, 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 and listen, on the street, you, you can't uh, illustrate that better than being on the street. When you don't have loyalty from the people below you, you're in trouble. And that's how bosses get displaced and people get hurt in that life and so on and so forth. You got to have the loyalty of the people that you're over and you got to have loyalty from people that, and you got to be loyal rather. You have, you have to be loyal to the people that you, that you have under you, under your control and for the people that might be above you. Because you could be a boss, you may not be the top boss. You know, and again, I heard this all the time. I was a cop regime in that life. What is the real term of a cop regime? It's a street boss. That's what it means. The boss assigns soldiers to you and you have men reporting to you. So many people, because the media and people online call me a boss, Francis wasn't a boss. I never call myself a boss. I'm a cop regime and the real meaning of that is that you're a street boss. You have men assigned to you and you, you're, the, you're their boss, period. So please, I'm not calling myself a boss. That's just the way it is. That's the term. Next, you know, and this one really struck me. This came at the end, and I think it's going to lead into chapter two or episode two. It said you got to have a business plan. You know, I have said this so many times. As a matter of fact, the uh, you know the first point that I make in how to become a boss is you got to have a plan. You can't just you know wing it and hope maybe one day I'll be the boss. You got to have a plan. You got to lay this out, and you got to have a plan not only to get there but how to maintain your leadership position, you know? And again, I think we're going to see that more in episode two with Frank Lucas. So um, really great. And they talk about Nikki Scarfo in this, not in a great way. They talk about Vic Arena, who was an associate, you know, a made guy in the Colombo family, somebody I knew well. Vic was with my father first before, you know, he became a, uh, a soldier and a captain. And, uh, and then again, they talk about Frank Lucas. So again, let me point out what's important in this episode and why I think this whole series is going to be very good. Number one, they give you some good principles on how to become not only a mob boss, but how to become a boss in your life. Same principles in some ways, you know, number one. Number two, the animation, terrific. You're going to love it. I'm telling you, especially the young ones. I happen to like it. I think it really adds something. I used it in my movie, documentary movie, uh, God the Father, and it was a big hit. People loved it. And I think we're going to put up a link at some point. If you want to have access to that, you can. The archival footage is great. You're going to love it. I'm telling you, they did a really good job. So Netflix has put this together. I think you can learn something from it and also be entertained. I think you're going to really enjoy it. I will be reviewing it for the next six weeks or next five weeks after this one. I'll be reviewing it on Mob Movie Monday. So yes, Mob Movie Monday is returning with this series, How to Become a Maid. <laughs> I'm sorry, still in my head. How to become a mob boss. So you're going to enjoy it. Uh, that's it, people. What do I have to say in wrapping this up? You know, uh, we're getting into the holiday season. I hope everybody has got their Christmas plans, their Thanksgiving plan. That comes up first. One of my favorite holidays. You don't have to buy anything but food. People come. You got four days to relax. It's a wonderful time of the year. So I hope everybody is preparing for that. We got a lot of craziness going on in the world. So, you know, do the best you can through this holiday season. It's all about God, family, friends, you know, friends, East wine, maybe, you know, we have a special coming up, uh, you know, friends, I think you're going to enjoy what we have to offer on that. Um, and I guess that's about it for today. So how do I always leave you people same way? It's not going to change ever, no matter where I am, be safe, be healthy, even with all the food that you're going to eat, try to do it in moderation for the holidays. Eh. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless each and every one of you. And you know, people, when I say that, I mean it. I want to see everybody doing well. I really mean that. And uh, yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.